So I'm going to try to get through this one relatively quick, even though it will feel a little bit complicated. So we're looking at vector functions again. We're going to convert them to, to Cartesian functions, but we're going to use true identities to do it. All right, so we're going to convert this to a Cartesian function. Uh, now, you'll notice that it's not in terms of time this time. It's in terms of something called lambda. Uh, that's just to show that our I and our J component don't have to depend on time. Uh, this whole thing could be happening based upon some other third variable. And lambda will do for this one. All right, so uh, what can we say? Well, we know that this is going to be the x coordinate of our or our i coordinate, and we know that this is going to be our j. So we can say that x is equal to one minus two cos lambda, and we can say that y is equal to three sine lambda. Okay, uh, and now this problem here is that these are not like easily. Um, reversible, like not easy to make lambda the subject in either of these, but we can do it in a slightly different way. And that is that instead of making lambda the subject, let's make cos lambda the subject, and let's make sine lambda the subject, and then we'll be able to use trig identities to combine them in some way. So let's call this equation one, and to make uh, cos lambda the subject, I can say that that's going to be equal to x minus one, uh, divided by negative 2, and that's going to be equal to cos lambda. All right, and I'll just call that like equation 1 dash. Uh, now, this one here, that's a little simpler. We can just say that y divided by 3 is equal to sine lambda here, and I'll call that equation 2 dash because that must be equation 2. Okay, uh, now this is where we can use our trig identity because we can say, well, Cos lambda is equal to this, and sine lambda is equal to this. And trig identity, I know that cos squared lambda plus uh, sine squared lambda would be equal to 1, which now means that I can sub equation 1 dash and 2 dash into that sub 1 dash and 2 dash. And when I do that, I'll get uh, x minus 1 um, over negative 2, all squared, because that was that bit's cos lambda, and then squaring it, and then adding in y on 3 to sine lambda, and then squaring it, and that's going to be equal to 1. Okay, that's pretty close. Uh, what I'll just do is uh, separate this, so this is squared, and then this is squared. So I'll just write it up here. It's going to be x minus 1 squared over negative 2 squared is 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. And now we have a Cartesian equation for uh, this. Shouldn't really call it a function, that's not a function. Uh, Alright, so now what you should also know is that this is an ellipse. It's an ellipse, ellipse that's moved one over here, so that's going to be uh, the centre, it's moved one over and it hasn't moved up or down. Um, that four is going to represent how far across, uh, and so it's moving across by the square root of that, and that nine is going to represent how far up, so one, two, and three. That means that there's going to be points here, here, down here, and here, and we get a nice little Ellipse. And so that's pretty cool. So as lambda changes, this um, object is moving around this ellipse. Pretty cool. So one more, really fast. We've got this one, we've got this one. We need to let that equal x and let that equal y, something like that. Now we can't find lambda by itself, but we can find sec lambda and tan lambda by themselves. So this was easy, just divide by 2, and 2 didn't change at all. Okay, so. Now we need to look at our formula sheet and find some relationship between uh, sec theta and tan theta. And I can see one on my formula sheet, and that is this one. Sec squared lambda minus tan squared lambda equals 1. So now I can shove x on 2 into here and shove y into here. I'll just tidy this one up a little bit by squaring top and bottom. And now I have a Cartesian equation. x squared on 4 minus y squared equals 1. I don't know why that got lost there. Now that's our function, our equation, sorry. Now you can type that into GeoGebra or Desmos and take a look at what that one looks like. It's a pretty funky looking hyperbola. 
but uh, that's sort of beyond where we want to get to today. As long as we understand that we can uh, take these vector equations and convert them to Cartesian equations um, by recalling some of our trig identities, we're in business.